Yo, welcome into the show. This is Philadelphia Eagles now by Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr. and coming your way, NFL Draft is coming up at the end of April. It is time for another Philadelphia Eagles mock draft. All seven rounds as the Eagles here are equipped with a total of eight selections for Howie Roseman, this front office, and the scouting department to use at their disposal. Here are the Eagles selections as of right now. Round one, pick 22. It's the first time that Philadelphia is going to be on the clock. The Eagles also have two picks in the second round, only a couple of picks apart. Number 50 overall from New Orleans, and then 53, which is their own pick. No selections in the third round, but Philadelphia back on the board. Round four, pick 120. Round five, pick 161 from Tampa Bay. And then three compensatory picks. Two in round five, 171 and 172 overall. So back-to-back -back selections there. And then the final pick for Philadelphia, round six, pick 210. Also from the compensatory pick formula. Before we take a look at my newest mock draft, this will be my third. Be sure to subscribe to the show. More draft content to come all throughout the month of April. In addition to the best Eagles news, best Eagles analysis, and of course, anytime there's a big report, Anytime there's juicy rumors out there, we talk about that as well. Hit that sub button. And as always, go Barons. With Philadelphia on the clock, 22 overall, I'm going with the player who, outside of Quinian Mitchell, is my favorite cornerback in this class. That's Kool-Aid McKinstry. I love what he brings to the table as a bona fide stud on the outside. And during my perfect Eagles draft plan, I tried to work the phones to move up to take Quinian Mitchell. The asking price was just a little bit too high for Howie Roseman. That's why we stay at 22 here and we take Kool-Aid McKinstry. The thought with this pick, the Eagles need a number one cornerback for the future because Darius Slay is getting older. And you need another top tier corner opposite of Darius Slay right now. And I think Kool-Aid McKinstry can be that from day one. And he just has that dog mentality that all Eagles fans love. Vic Fangio adores, and this city adores as well. This past year with Alabama, sometimes I thought he was better than Terrion Arnold. That's his teammate on the other side for that very good Alabama defense under Nick Saban. He tallied 32 tackles, two TFLs, seven pass breakups, no picks. But that's fine because teams didn't go his way because they knew he was a stud, and they saw that number one is an absolute ball hawk who has good instincts. Good speed. He ran a great 40-yard dash at his pro day despite having a Jones fracture in his foot. That's a little bit of a concern for me because you never want corners who have feet issues, but he's expected to make a full recovery and be back by the time the training camp comes around. He was only targeted 39 times last year because him and Terry and Arnold were holding it down. Gave up one touchdown in coverage, 205 yards total, seven pass breakups, and a quarterback rating of 73.1. If you're concerned about how he wasn't really targeted or thrown toward last year, I'm not concerned about that. Because in the two previous years, he played a lot, and I thought that he put a lot of good plays on tape. And over his career, 93 tackles, 5 TFLs, 23 pass breakups, 2 interceptions. For a cornerback, you want a player who's never going to lose their confidence. Because corners who do that, they go down in the dumps, they really struggle, especially in a pressure cooker of a city like Philadelphia. You want a cornerback who could turn around, address the ball, high point the football, read the eyes of the wide receiver, and knows when the football is coming their direction. Kool-Aid can do that. And speaking of his confidence, he said, look, everybody wants to rave about 40-yard dashes. That usually means if you have great speed that you're getting beat. I don't have to worry about Get a bit worry about getting beat all that much. Kool-Aid to the Eagles at number 22 in my third mock draft. That is my selection in the first round for Philadelphia. You can do your own mock. Who would you take at number 22? Very fascinated to see what all of the fans come up with. Eagles back on the board, 50th overall in the second round, and they address still a massive need. And can you imagine the speed from the linebacking core in Philadelphia if you have Devin White and Edgerin Cooper, the linebacker, linebacker out of Texas A&M, I think he's going to be a superstar in this league. Reminds me a lot of Fred Warner because he's a smart, heady, cerebral player with physicality and the speed to match it. The thought with this pick, 
Cooper is blazing fast on tape. He can really range from sideline to sideline. He plays with hustle. He plays with toughness. He plays with grit. He plays with a nonstop motor. And like Kool-Aid McKinstry, I'm trying to remake the attitude of this defense. That's why I wanted Philadelphia to bring back C.J. Gardner-Johnson. That's why I advocated for the Eagles to sign Devin White. We need that swagger back on the defensive side of the football for Philadelphia. I think I got my swagger back. We're doing that here with Kool-Aid McKinstry and Edger and Cooper. Last year with the Aggies, 12 games played, notched 84 tackles, 17 TFLs. So he can really read and diagnose how to make plays against the run. He had eight sacks, so you can use him as a blitzer and as a delayed blitzer. Two forced fumbles, two pass breakups, right place, right time, often when you turn on the tape and just has a knack for making those big plays. His coverage numbers, targeted 16 times, gave up 14 catches, 132 yards, but no touchdowns. Those two pass breakups, quarterback rating of 101, has to get a little bit better in coverage. There's no doubt about that, but I'm looking at the physical traits here, and then I'm looking at Vic Fangio being able to develop the player here. Steady production at the college level, wasn't injured a lot, so steady durability and availability, very important. 58 tackles, 61 tackles, 84 tackles in his last three years at the college level. I would just love a young franchise linebacker. Devin White is on a one-year deal. Outside of that, linebacker question is a big question. What can the Eagles get from the Kobe Dean? Not sure we can bank on him. Edger and Cooper is my answer. A few picks later, we're going to go wide receiver here with the 53rd overall pick. Ricky Pearsall is a player who a lot of draft evaluators really like. And you put him in the slot alongside A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Ricky Pearsall is a fast and shifty slot receiver. One word of that, sheesh. You think about the possibilities of this offense with the aforementioned Brown and Smitty, with Dallas Goddard, with Saquon Barkley, and Ricky Pearsall. It's been a long time since Philadelphia has had that classic slot with good footwork, good route running ability. I know they've utilized Devontae Smith there. You can continue to use him on the inside because you have your X and A.J. Brown, and Smitty can also play there too. Very good testing numbers for Pearsall coming out of Florida. Stands at 6'1". 189 pounds, good vertical leap at 42 inches. So the explosiveness and the quick twitch is certainly there. He ran a 4-4-1, 40-yard dash, elite shuttle, elite three-cone, 978 out of 10 on the relative athletic score. Also consistent production for him. He can catch the ball, but he can also be utilized as a gadget weapon, end arounds, bubble screens, some reverses. 12 total touchdowns the last two years, 17 total touchdowns the last three years. Played at Arizona State, went to Florida this past year, 65 grabs, 965 yards with subpar quarterback play. What is the favorite Eagles jersey that you own? I want to know what your favorite Eagles jersey is. I ask you that because... Is it a Saquon Barkley jersey? Or do you want a Saquon Barkley jersey? If you want one, they're available right now using that link down below me, chatsports.com slash Saquon jersey. Use that link. Great deals on a Saquon jersey, but also other Philadelphia Eagles jerseys as well. That link is down below in the comment section and in the show notes of this video. 120 overall. Eagles have a little bit of a break. No picks in that third round, as I said. And they are back in action with 120 overall in the fourth round. Zach Zinter is an interior offensive lineman out of Michigan who may have been a first-round pick or a second-round pick if he did not fracture his tibula and fibula in his leg against Ohio State during Thanksgiving weekend. And there is some risk with taking a player like this, but it's a broken bone, and a broken bone can heal. It's not like you have to worry about a ligament, ACL, Achilles. It's a broken bone, and when I was at the college football playoff national championship back earlier this year in January for Michigan-Washington, 
He suffered that injury in November. He was walking off the plane in January. Now, he hasn't been able to test in the pre-draft process, but this is a really special player who was an All-American this past year and a second-team All-American the year before that. Pro Football Focus stats on 649 snaps in 2023, overall grade of 76.6. He gave up zero sacks. He surrendered zero hits, just five hurries. Keep in mind, J.J. McCarthy, very mobile quarterback behind him, and zero penalties. So a smart player. He's been, before that injury, a durable player, just an unfortunate injury, which happened, and he's been a top-tier offensive lineman. The Eagles have a need along the offensive line. At the very worst, very good depth option for the birds here. Miles Cole, edge rusher out of Texas Tech. This might be a little bit of a reach, but we see reaches happen all the time. And I'm going with him at 161 overall just because of the athletic traits that he possesses and what he can become down the road. It's going to be a hit or a miss, but you take risks in the NFL draft. The thought with this pick, he is 6'6", 280 pounds. This player has a lot of potential, and you can use him in a hybrid way. Outside, inside, I like the future that he could have for Philadelphia here. Sione Vaki, one of the most fascinating players in this draft. I doubt that he's available at 171 overall, but in this mock draft simulator, he was. He played running back and safety with Utah. Just a great all-around athlete. Isaac Garendo, one of my draft crushes. Running back out of Louisville. 4-3, 40-yard dash. He also has some size to him. And then Kamani Vidal. You want to go another running back here? You go with him out of Troy. You could go defensive tackle. You could go tight end. A couple of different positions, but I'm going best player available. Keeping in mind that Kenneth Gainwell is in the final year of his deal. Outside of that, running back room, it's not looking all that good. How about you reset the running back clock with a couple of late rounders right there? Many of you will ask about defensive tackle. Some of you have said, Chase, Philadelphia has to go defensive tackle in round one. I disagree. You have Jalen Carter. You have Jordan Davis. You have Milton Williams and Moro Ajomo. All solid players. It's time for them to step up into those larger roles. Grade the mock draft. A, B, C, D, or F. Mock drafts are so funny and polarizing because some people will say, great. Other people will say, you suck, F. Let me know.